interesting how, you know, sometimes when you're looking for a word from God, he'll just place it right there under your nose. Today I was feeling like I was under spiritual attack, especially since I had been doing some interviews with other channels and having conversations with other targeted individuals. I'd noticed just the kind of increase in spiritual activity that was coming from the enemy toward my person. And so I opened up a, a devotional, actually, that I have for different days of the year. And it was really appropriate because it, it speaks to how um, your answer to this is prayer. And it opens with uh, a portion from uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verse 1. Then Jesus told his disciples that they should always pray and not give up. I'm just going to hop about in, in here. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but I want to just read different passages to you to give you a little bit of strength in your spiritual warfare against those who have targeted you. And by those who have targeted you, I mean these demonic entities that reside in all kinds of people with open doorways of sin in their lives. Some who have invited demonic entities in intentionally and some who just happen to be under Satan's grasp because of the way they live. Anyway, here's some of the portions. Prayer that uses previously unanswered prayers as an excuse for laziness has already ceased to be a prayer of faith. To someone who prays in faith, unanswered prayers are simply the evidence that the answer is much closer. From beginning to end, our Lord's lessons and examples teach us that prayer that is not steadfast and persistent not revived and refreshed, and does not gather strength from previous prayers, is not the prayer that will triumph. That comes from William Arthur. Arthur Rubinstein, the great pianist, once said, If I neglect practicing one day, I notice. Two days, my friends notice. Three days, the public notices. It's the old principle, practice makes perfect. We must continue believing, praying, and doing His will. In any of the arts, when the artist ceases to practice, we know the result. If we would only use the same level of common sense in our faith that we use in our everyday life, we would be moving on toward perfection. David Livingstone's motto was, I resolved never to stop until I had come to the goal and achieved my purpose. He was victorious through unwavering persistence and faith in God. That's something that I had to do today. I had to actually, I had to go to war. I had to open up my spiritual warfare binder that I have here and just pray against the enemy. Because again, I had noticed that since I had done this interview with um, Meigs B and I've been talking to Simon over at Holographic Reality Has You Fooled, that it just brought some of those forces of darkness out of the woodwork. And also, I was feeling a kind of spiritual attack. You just uh, know it when you can feel it. And so, what did I do? I prayed against uh, Satan and witchcraft first. Uh, then I uh, read a couple of chapters from Luke, and I watched a uh, uh, about a 30-minute long commentary on the passages that I had read. Uh, and then I discussed it with my family. And then I returned to my room, my quiet place, my secret place, and I opened up my binder again and I prayed against this wickedness for about 30 minutes again. And then I opened up this book and came across that. And it was, again, the way that God speaks to me sometimes is just by affirmation. And I took that as a sign that I need to do this every day, whether I feel like I'm under spiritual attack or not. And I recommend that anybody who's targeted out there, who's finally coming to the realization that what's been happening to you can't actually be explained by conventional terms. What's happening to you is supernatural, and it's happening to you through the spirit realm. These are spirits and people. Again, I challenge anyone to just look up Pastor David Lynn and check out a video where he expels this demon from a woman. Wow. Fire of God. Fire of God, right now. 
And I'm just reminding you again that that kind of spirit can reside in a lot of different people who just go about their daily life talking to you, telling you about their day, people you would never suspect. And yet, meanwhile, they have, since they've opened up doorways to this, they have that somewhere in them. And if they do, the spirit within them can actually mess with you. Just remember that the devil is a liar. He wants you to think this is all happening in the physical dimension. Really, it's just people with demons in them because of the way they've led their lives. Again, some of these people are literal Satanists. Some of them are drug addicts. They come from all walks of life. And that's probably why a lot of your gang stalkers look creepy. A lot of them actually have demons in them. That's why they look creepy. Knowing that this is demonic, the targeted individual must begin engaging in spiritual warfare as often as possible and as soon as possible. You will know you are under attack when you feel it. Have your warfare prayers nearby or memorized for these moments, and claim your authority in the name of Jesus Christ. God loves to answer prayers against Satan and evil being committed in our world. Unfortunately, many Christians do not pray in this way. Despite the fact that witches and occultists are doing elaborate spells and rituals putting their evil out there in the world, when you pray against Satan, it gets answered. You will have more power over the enemy the more you remove the defilement of sin in your own life in this walk. Give God everything and promise to serve Him. Really take an inventory of your own life. If you want freedom from gang stalking, then act like it. Become the man or woman Christ wants you to be. By removing sin from your life, you will become more and more effective in your spiritual warfare against this enemy that is up against you. God needs you to be a general in his army to get rid of this abomination from our world. Stay strong. Stay blessed. Stay close to Jesus Christ. I love you.